Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to show you how to make a great anti-frizz serum for curly or permed hair. Now one of the reasons that hair becomes frizzy is when the level of humidity or moisture in the air is more than the level of moisture in the hair. So we actually need to repair the hair cuticle a little bit and balance out some charges in the hair to help reduce that frizz. We also don't want to weigh down some beautiful natural curls. So our anti-frizz serum needs to be really light to apply but make sure it repairs the hair, delivers and holds moisture in and balances out any excess negative charges to reduce the frizz effectively. So let me show you how it's made and I'll talk you through the key ingredients as we go. This is the product we're going to be making here. So it's a nice glossy emulsion. It's really light and it spreads really easily for easy application throughout the hair. Now to make this product and to get this nice bouncy gel texture, I am using some carbama. So I'm going to disperse this in my water and my propane diol first. Now I've got propane diol in here. It is a humectant. And one of the reasons I've got a humectant in there is, as I mentioned, you get frizzy hair when the humidity in the environment is greater than the moisture in the hair. So having a humectant means we're delivering moisture into the hair so that we end up with more moisture in the hair than when we started. Now, just a tip when you're using carbama, a lot of times people, when they're new to using carbama, will just drop it into the water, mix it a little bit like that, and move on to the next steps. It's actually really important that we wet that carbama out properly first. So for example, here, this is not wet sufficiently. We need to stir this a little more so that we can get it to disperse more effectively before we proceed to the next steps. So that would mean low shear mixing for longer until it's nicely dispersed. Now what I've done is I have prepared one earlier and here is an example of what we would say is good wetting out or good dispersion. You can see here the powder hasn't fully swelled but it is no longer these sorts of jelly like clumps. So you really need to make sure you mix using low shear and give it some time to wet out thoroughly before continuing. Before I proceed to adding my emollients, I'm just going to neutralize that carbamer. And you'll see how quick and easy it is to neutralize and it creates a beautiful viscous clear gel. Now I'm doing this step now so that it will also help with emulsion stability when I add my oily phase. Now I can heat my water and my oil phase. Now I need to be careful with this oil phase because I have a very high waxy content compared to a very low liquid oil content. So I don't wanna burn my oils while I wait for my water phase to heat. I do have to be careful with this and then I will also find that I would keep my water phase very hot while I continue to emulsify and mix my oily phase in. So it's a nice glossy emulsion. Another important note about my oil phase, you'll notice there's not a lot of oil present. And this is really important. It's actually a, a big misconception that to tame frizz, you need a lot of oil. That's actually not correct. What we're making here is a nice emulsion for delivery and definitely that low content of oils will help with some of the emolliency and slip of the hair but the oils really aren't doing the main job here. The other materials that I'll introduce you to shortly are doing the hard work. So we don't need a lot of oils to smooth out that frizz. In fact, too many oils will just weigh down the hair and you'll lose a beautiful curl because it's just too heavy to bounce. If your oil phase starts to get too hot while you're waiting for your water phase to heat up, just remove it from the heat. Remember, you don't want to burn the oily phase while you're waiting for your water to be hot enough.
Now we get to the materials that will really make a difference to that frizz. The first one I'm adding is a hydrolyzed rice protein. You could use another form of hydrolyzed protein to suit your brand or your company. Just check the input to suit the material you use. Now one of the reasons I'm using a hydrolyzed protein is you lose a lot of moisture from your hair when the cuticle is lifted or when it's not really smooth. So this hydrolyzed rice protein is going to help smooth and strengthen that hair cuticle so it helps protect from moisture losses so and it's also helping repair the hair so it's actually helping balance out that frizz by sealing the cuticle i'm then going to add some polyquaternium and some vitamin b5 now the polyquaternium material helps with charge so you get a lot of frizz the hair is normally negatively charged and you get a lot of frizz when you get a big negative buildup in the hair. So a polyquaternium, it's positively charged, so it helps balance out the charge in the hair. Just be careful with exactly what you add to the formula because we have got carbama present, and carbama may not be compatible with some positively charged materials you wanna add, but in this case, I'm using this polyquaternium, and as you can see, it's perfectly compatible but just check if you wanted to use a different cationically charged material to make sure it's compatible with the carbama. Finally, I'm adding some fragrance, my preservative, and some vitamin E. And that's just gonna help protect the formula from oxidation. Nice, give that a stir until it's homogenous. And I can check and record the final pH, but I don't want to adjust it because I got my beautiful viscous gel from the carbama. If I alter the pH from here, I can impact the final form and stability of the formula because it's already been neutralized. Now on the day you make it, you'll find viscosity is a little low, but it will set to be very viscous by the next day, but still feel very, very light and spread very easily so you can rub it through your hair easily to control that frizz. Well, there you go. That's how to create an anti-frizz serum and explanations of why I've used the materials I have to get the best results. You can contact us for this formula. We're very happy to share it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and please make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.